Hello, thank you for attending my presentation. My name is Maxime Vollery. I'm a PhD student at Ecole Polytechnique Fédérale de Lausanne in Switzerland. I will present a new active absorber design that does not require an actuator model. Here is the outline of my presentation. I'm going to start with an introduction. Then I will present the design, then show some experimental results and finish with a conclusion and some future work still in the progress. The introduction. As I have just said, I am presenting a new active electroacoustic absorber realization. The goal is to turn an electrodynamic loudspeaker into an absorbing device. My design relies on only two sensors, two microphones. They are therefore quite cheap and unintrusive. Some other design uses an accelerometer that is glued on the loudspeaker membrane, which is not okay for small transducers. The use of two sensors allows to implement the feedback loop, which will lead to better accuracy and enables us to be free from an actuator model. In this case, the actuator would be the loudspeaker. The control strategy. I will first shortly explain how the electrodynamic loudspeaker is modeled. Passively, with no current in its coil, a loudspeaker is a mass spring damper system of the second order. The ratio between the pressure in front of the membrane, PF, and the membrane velocity, V, is called the specific acoustic impedance, ZSS and it is modeled by three parameters, the specific acoustic resistance, RSS, the resonant frequency, omega zero, and the mechanical quality factor, QMS. A current I flowing in the coil results in a Lorentz force, minus B L time I, that acts on the membrane. However, Another force due to the front pressure, Pf times Sd, also acts on the membrane. The sum of these two forces divided by the effective piston area and the specific impedance results to the membrane velocity. We now have a two input, one output model of the speaker. I will later compare my control to the feedforward architecture from Etienne Rivet, so I will quickly present what his feedforward strategy is. There is a digital controller, Theta, that measures the pressure in front of the membrane using a microphone and outputs a current into the speaker coil. By knowing the transducer model and the target impedance ZST, the control low can be found. The target cannot be purely real for stability reason. It is modeled as a modified version of the passive impedance in which the target resistance RST and the quality factor QT are tuned. If these targets differ too much from the natural behavior of the speaker, instabilities can happen due to the controller digital delay and the model inaccuracies. For implementing a feedback loop, an estimation of the actual velocity of the membrane is needed. This is done through a microphone in the speaker backing cavity. In this cavity, the pressure PB is proportional to the membrane displacement. By numerically differentiating it, the membrane velocity is obtained. The proportionality factor is called the box specific compliance and is directly linked to the volume of the box VB. The feedback control is built in the following way. The target membrane velocity is the front pressure divided by the target resistance, RST. The actual membrane velocity is found by differentiating the pressure in the cavity as explained on the previous slide. Finally, a feedback current proportional to the velocity error is fed into the coil of the speaker. It can be analytically shown that the system is stable for k greater than some negative value. In practice, only positive values of k will be taken into account.
the impedance that is achieved in the membrane is called ZSA. It can be seen that it converges to the target resistance as K tends toward positive infinity. However, if the feedback is too strong, instabilities will happen in practice, mainly due to the digital controller delay. For all positive gains, the achieved impedance is passive, so its resistive part is greater than zero. This is because the target is purely real valued. Although the force factor and the effective piston area appear in the formula, they only act as a scaling on K and are thus not needed to be known precisely. The only needed parameter is the cavity specific compliance CSP in order to correctly estimate the velocity of the membrane. This parameter can easily be identified once and for all using for instance a laser vibrometer or by measuring the cavity volume. Experimental results. This is the absorber that was built. On the picture, the two control microphones are clearly visible, one measuring the pressure in front of the membrane and the other one in the enclosure. It is based on a Monocore SPX30M speaker. The measured parameters of the absorbers, including the cavity, are presented at this table. This is the experimental setup I used. I measured the impedance presented by the absorber using a quench tube. Here you recognize the absorber. It is mounted in a quench tube with two measurement microphones. Their signal are acquired by a frequency analyzer, which also excites an external sound source. The absorber microphone are polarized by the signal conditioner, which is measured by the digital controller. And the output voltage of the controller is converted into a current thanks to this voltage controlled current source. I will present two measurements for two different targets. Here are the measured impedances for a target of rho C. The measured curves are the one that had the largest bandwidth while still being stable. This means the largest feedback gain K for the feedback method and the smallest target quality factor QT in the feedforward method. On the graph, you can see the impedance magnitude normalized to rho C with respect to the frequency. In blue, the passive case with no control. In red, my feedback implementation with k is equal to 11.5 amper second per meter. In yellow, the feedforward result. It can be seen that while the feedforward achieved the larger bandwidth, the feedback is more accurate, especially around the resonance. Here is the same measurement as previous slide, but with a target of one fifth of rho C. The two control schemes perform quite similarly, although the feedback is still more accurate at the resonance. It is closer to 0 0.2. Discussion and future work. To sum up, I presented a control architecture that does not rely on a transducer model uses non-intrusive and non-expensive sensors, is more accurate thanks to the feedback, can perform similarly to the state-of-the-art feedforward absorber for low target resistances. There are still some points that I need to further investigate, including trying to target a more sophisticated impedance while still being passive, designing a more advanced feedback controller like a proportional integral derivative PID controller. Trying to control some very small loudspeaker that could present nonlinearities and try to linearize them. I thank you for your attention. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'm now available for some questions.